Hi there, my name's Beth and this is the story of how I renovated my 1904 Dutch sailing barge. Well, after last week's high octane excitement with the ceilings, let's come back down to earth. Well, down to the bilges anyway. So the plan this week was to uh, start on the bilges, um, but there's uh, another thing we need to do as well, and that's to check on the mast. Uh, now the mast hasn't been on board the boat for um, for a year or something, um, and it's been on the roof at the yard uh, for, for all of that time. So they lifted it down recently just to start checking things out. Um, but we've planned to go back into the yard in June uh, to get the mast stepped and, and all of the equipment for raising the mast. So that'll be really exciting. So um, so I need to go and check the mast, just make sure it's all well and, uh, and start to prepare it as well. Um, I'm gonna try and do a bit of sanding um, on the mast uh, before it goes back on the boat. Um, I'm gonna try and sand the back of it as well, which is much harder to do when it's folded down. So, um, so anyway, let's go and check the mast at the yard. So this is the mast with the, uh, the mainsail attached as so, well. Um, and when I put it back on again, I don't want to put the mainsail back on, so I'm going to have to try and get the mainsail off and fold it up and ready to go away to be repaired. Because uh, it's got a massive split down the side when um, previous owners had uh, had a wasp's nest in there, so, um, so it's damaged the sail. So I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to try and strip this back and then I'm going to try and get a little bit of sanding done on the mast. There's not a lot of space to work. But um, yeah, let's try and do the best we can. I've just done a first pass sand on here and it looks okay there's a you can really see the huge crack huge crack in there so I don't know I don't know whether that um, that's critical or not Maybe not. I don't know. Anyway, it'll be uh, it'll look nice, um, and uh, and yeah, I can get it checked properly before I use it properly for sailing. Um, so I've um, I've derigged the the mainsail mostly from the boom, and this is the boom, and that's the mast, and the boom is almost almost the length of the mast really. It's quite long. Um, so yeah, I've derigged most of the most of the sail and done a first pass. But my hands are fizzy now, so with the vibrations, so I'm gonna take a little bit of a break. So yeah, so I'm going to um, I'm gonna go back and um, and start thinking about the bilger's work. 
uh, and that means I can start to do internal wars and uh, get a bit more comfort uh, aboard uh, which is good but I think I'm going to keep popping up here and uh, and working on the mast um, I find it much easier just to do you know one session and then have a break uh, if uh, you try and pack loads in it just you sort of burn out a bit and get exhausted but I'm pretty tired now anyway uh, so yeah so that's fine um, I'm going to uh, leave it for today and uh, next job builders so these boards are probably the worst in the entire boat, even though the boards actually are not rotten at all. But um, the support that they're sitting on is rotten, and um, and I think it's um, it's soft wood, some kind of soft wood. Hey, Bert. Bert's come to have a look. I think it's because I'm talking, isn't it? He wants to know who I'm talking to. I'm talking to them. Talk to them over there. Okay. He's off to see the duck now. Um, the uh, yeah so the uh, the, this was all on a support oh you back come here come on here come on you can you can see the oh, there we go there we go oh, okay he's coming to say hello as well so the support that they were um they were on was he was getting this opportunity to give me a, a good oh. oh no i love you too um so the support they were on is softwood and uh, and so it's uh, over time it's just been really damp in this forward section um, and it could well be the reason why there's some overplating was needed uh, in the uh, on the outside of the hull um, because um, this area was where the hatch was for the um, for the counterweight for the mast so there was a really big long hatch that always leaked um, and there was also another um, forward hatch which leaked as well um, so it was always wet in here. It was just constantly wet. Um, so uh, so it's had years and years of just drips of water and, and everything. So so maybe underneath there is a bit grim. Um, so, but I think it's probably the worst. But yeah, so I'm going to start to to kind of excavate here and we're going to start to take the boards up and uh, and then start to work out, um, you know, what, what to do with them in terms of cleaning them up. Because ideally, I'd like to, you know, kind of like, I'd like to sand them, plane them maybe. Um, or maybe I'll have to get them planed because they're so hardwood. I don't know. But I'd like to kind of wax and polish them so they're nice and shiny. Um, and I think that would look lovely. Do you think it'll be lovely? I think it'll be lovely. Do you think so? Should we do that? Yeah. We're going to do that. These are the main sheet blocks. They're quite substantial, aren't they? But they also, like all of them, need a lot of repair. So hopefully I can save these ones. Um, but you can see where, where they've been out of the sun. This is here, beautiful. And where they've been in the sun. And they're cracked and old. But we'll get them nice again.
So this bit of wood, this uh, this beam that's been sitting on, what's been sitting on, <clears throat> I'll support just on the hull, albeit on a seam, on a riveted seam, but they're supported on the hull with these two kind of pads, uh, which isn't ideal, I don't think. It's not, there's not too much weight up here, so it's not a problem, but I don't think it's that tidy. It could be a bit tidier. So it's the first day I've had for a bit of a rest, so I've had a bit of a, a bit of a lion, um, but it's lunchtime now. Um, so through the through the week, um, I sat with my neighbour uh, on an evening, and we had a beer and started uh, preparing the new lines. So um, the uh, hello, um, the uh, huge big reel of uh, of line came. So I've been starting to cut it up and turn them turn them into lines. Um, so I guess the reel of rope turns into lines um, but uh, so I've got these these three lines here well two lines here and one line there so I've got um, I've cut two 25 meter springs and they're the lines that go from one end of the boat to the other end on the shore uh, and they cross over and the idea is that they stop the boat moving backwards and forwards uh, and they also they can deal with spring tides as well because they can they can angle um, I've also cut two 15 minute meter breast lines. I'm talking about breasts again. For the original breast conversation, that's in this video here. Um, but, uh, but so those go um, across the boat from the bits on the opposite side of the, uh, of the shore. Um, and they go across the boat and then they go to the shore. And they're longer, they go across the boat because that provides a little bit more flex in the, in the lines. So they're kind of not, they don't snatch as much and, and kind of bang. And then I'm also going to cut two 10 meter shorelines, which will just be, you know, really, really short shorelines. Because I've got 20 meters left over. So, um, so I thought I'd cut that. I was going to keep it in one 20 meter line, but then, yeah, I'm just going to cut them into two 10 meter lines. Um, and then I've got a, a kind of set of, of lines. So I've been, I've been whipping them. There's a couple of uh, a couple of different things you can do with uh, with lines to prepare them. Um, obviously, if you don't do anything, because they are um, their hawser are laid, so they're laid in. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see, but they're multiple um, bundles or multiple spirals. So there are there are some fibres which are spiralled together, and then they're spiralled together, bundled together, and then they're spiralled together again. So it makes this hawser laid um, line. And uh, you can see because you can actually put your finger through through that. So this is three ply. There are three plies in this line. Um, so if you didn't do anything to the end, then it would just all unravel and all go raggy. And uh, and actually, that's how baggy wrinkles are made. Um, baggy wrinkles are the big hairy fronds that uh, that generally sit on uh, on uh, shrouds and things like that to prevent wear on the uh, on on other you know, on that part of the rigging. Uh, and I'm actually going to do some for my shrouds as well, but um, that's for a later date. So yeah, there's a couple of things, I've got a new curtain as well. Uh, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, you can uh, just melt the end into a big lump uh, and that's a bit, it doesn't look very nice. And also it can come apart as well. It can come apart quite easily. Uh, you can uh, do an, uh, an end splice. So that is taking these um, these pieces of the um, of the rope uh, back on themselves and splicing them in and that looks really nice and tidy and it keeps it all nice however it does actually make a little bit of a lump on the end of the the line and um, so if it is if the line is running through a fair lead or through a winch or something it can get jammed at that point and that's something you don't want to do because you'll end up having to cut the line if you're in a, a sticky situation so my favorite technique is to whip the end so I don't know if you can see here but I've taken this whipping twine and I've looped it or wrapped it around and around, round nice and tight. 
And then I've used a sail maker's needle to um, take the ends through and then do a stitch on each one just to keep the bundles together. So that looks really nice and neat. Um, I've kept it, I've kept it gothic black. Uh, you can get lots of different colours of these, but I've kept it black on black. So yeah, I sat with, uh, with a neighbour the other day and we did that. We used this um, waxed whipping twine um, and it is, uh, yeah, as, as the name suggests, it is, it's, a, it's a plastic, uh, it's a, um, like a polyester uh, line and it is slightly waxed so it sticks together and it's slightly hard. Um, and also these sailmaker's needles. They have a, a triangular end and then they have a shorter back and obviously they have a really big eye for big twine. So that allows me to, uh, to, to stitch through. So yeah, I'm gonna prepare another couple of lines today. I'm just gonna sit in the sun. Actually, it's a bit too bright. I need some sort of bimini, I think, to, uh, to sit in the sun. There's lots of um, chaos over there because sometimes the crow flies over and the geese don't like the crow at all, one little bit. Uh, but last, in spring, um, I actually saw the crow carry off one of the chicks, so I'm not surprised. They were smaller than they are now, but they're doing okay. So the first thing I do is make this little loop and then put a, put a, um, a turn around, or another couple of turns, because I'm going to put the end through this later on and pull it through. So this end that I've just cut off now goes through that loop and you can see um, the loop is now at the edge there. So I'm just going to hold that and then I'm going to pull this one through and that just pulls this knot all the way through. Not We don't want to pull it all the way out uh, just so it pops out the other end. Move it there, there it is. Right, it's popped out a little bit higher, but that's okay. We can we can work with that. So this one is the one that I need to thread my needle with. So thankfully these uh, these needles have really big eyes, so no no problem with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take this uh, across the um, the front, and I'm just going to um, to kind of control the uh, the whipping that I've done. So I'm going to put it through one lay to the next one and then you can see it snugs up the the twine there then I'm going to put it through this next lay through that one and then it's going to come out there just in front that's nice and again that one oops we want to I'm going to keep this one out There we go, that's nice and snugged up that one. Doesn't need to be too tight, just snug it up. Just give it some su support. And then through this last one here. And again, just snug it up, nice and uh, nice and tight. So you don't want them over tight, but you don't want them loose, you want a nice pressure on them. So these two pieces are now coming out in the same, well, the same, same area. So I'm going to tie these two together, right over left and under, left over right and through, a reef knot. So then these two are together, so I'm going to thread these two now. So we've locked the, the twine off there with a reef knot, but we're just going to put it through another lay, another lay here. And it's going to pop out just next to that stitch. That's good. It's so going to pull that through and then take the needle off. Then this one I'm going to cut just leaving a little end. And get the lighter just to just to melt those ends until they go, and then thumb to smooth it over. So that sticks it to to the next one. So that's one 
one whipped end. So um, this um, is much less likely to split and if it does it's fine because the frayed ends will only come to here and that's a nice hard whipped end there. Thank you.